at in-law's house, and Reese told me something that he had told the tackle of barrel. And after I got the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, it's kind of fitting for, for what I prepared for this morning. He said, Papa, he said, you know, you really go overboard on Christmas. You act like every day is Christmas. I thought about that. I'm thinking, well, you know what? Maybe we should think like every day is Christmas. We should be excited, excited to celebrate the birth of our, our Lord and Savior. And why not? Right? I mean, why should we limit it to one day a year or one month a year? Why not treat it every day like that? Huh. Pretty, pretty good idea, but Anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. But. <clears throat> so, my sermon this morning, um, I'm going to be jumping around through a few different, um, few different sections of Scripture. So, if you don't follow along, it's fine. The, the main thing I want you to do this morning is to try to examine <laughs> yourself and see where you fit into this. Okay? So, before we truly celebrate Christmas, we must be prepared, right? How many of you guys have already started preparing your house? Oh, yeah. A lot of us have. <clears throat> Even our house it is, we're not even moved into yet. We've got two Christmas trees up and some, some stuff around the mantle and everything. We had to get ready for Christmas. So it's, it's the time of year that everybody's doing that. The stores are packed with people buying gifts. The elevators are filled with instrumental Christmas favorites. The boxes are packed away months ago. They're, they're now brought back out, and, and all that lovely Christmas stuff is, is put out for show. The houses are decorated with lights and trimmings. And the yards become the showcases of Christmas splendor. What do you do to prepare for Christmas? <clears throat> now my in-laws, they've got a little Christmas village. That, well, it's kind of a big Christmas village now. And, and, and there's just Christmas things everywhere. And it's, it really feels like Christmas in there. <clears throat> in my house, there's usually a, a pretty big cleaning effort. <laughs> the whole house is cleaned from top to bottom to get everything in tip-top shape for Christmas. Before any decorations can be put out, the whole house gets a good clean. Then when the cleaning is complete, the house needs to be arranged for Christmas. <laughs> so the dining room gets, gets changed so we can make room for the Christmas trees and all the other decorations. Bookshelves are moved, furniture is moved, everyday decorations are put away. The whole house is given a new look in preparation for the decorations. And then after all the proper arrangements have been made, the decorations come out. Everything begins to look, to take the look of Christmas. The trees set up, the lights are strung from the top to bottom, with ornaments scattered all over the branches, various other things throughout the house. When all this is done, the work of the preparation is nearly finished. The final preparation for Christmas revolves around the presents, right? The lists are created. With, with wants and needs, and, and the shopping begins, if it hasn't already begun. <clears throat> There's multiple trips made to, to various stores and, and shopping centers, and it wouldn't be Christmas without making two or three trips back to the mall, right? The shopping, the shopping is all done so that we can give gifts and receive gifts, gifts on Christmas Day. And all this is a really good illusion of how God wants us to prepare for Christmas. When we truly prepare for Christmas, there needs to be a personal cleansing. When we truly prepare for Christmas, there needs to be a rearrangement of our priorities. When we truly prepare for Christmas, there's a decorating of the heart. When we prepare for Christmas, there's a receiving and giving of gifts. <clears throat> so let's take a look at each one of these things here this morning. The cleaning of the heart. Matthew 5, 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The word blessed literally means happy in the Greek text. From this statement of Jesus, we see that the pure in heart are those who are happy in heart. Why? Why would, why would they be happy? It's pretty simple, because one day they'll be able to see God. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? All you need is a pure heart. What can we do to get a pure heart? <clears throat> what can we do to get a pure heart? I don't know about you, but there are a lot of days when 
my heart doesn't seem so pure. Sometimes I get angry when someone cuts me off in traffic or when they don't want to do their work and, and I've got to pick up the slack. I get frustrated when, when, when I got something planned and then all of a sudden those plans are, are in shambles. And sometimes I, I still lose my temper over stupid and insignificant problems. You come across something and you know how to fix it, you just can't fix it. You get upset, you get frustrated. <clears throat> sometimes I, I still get a little jealous when I hear of others, others' achievements who, who outshine my own achievements. I'm going to be real up here. It happens. You know, you, you work hard for these things and then somebody comes along beside of you and, and makes it look easy. And you're like, and you get jealous. Maybe none of these things apply to you guys. <clears throat> maybe you're not like me. And maybe we have you guys have your lives together. <coughs> maybe you don't have a problem with a pure heart issue. I know sometimes I do. But if there are people out here this morning who are like me, and you struggle with having a pure heart, I have a question for you. How can we become pure in heart? What do we have to do? Well, I've got some bad news for you. There's nothing that we can do to have a pure heart. Yeah, we can pray, we can read the Bible, we can worship. That helps us with reaching God. But God is the only one who can make our hearts pure. He's the only one who can cleanse our hearts. And the easy part about that is, all we have to do is ask. We have to seek Him. David asked God for this exact thing in Psalm 51.10. Create in me a pure heart and renew a right spirit within me. God granted David's request. Gave him a clean heart. That was pretty simple. But he, had, he also had to mean it, though. He couldn't just simply be, you know, just, eh, God, clean my heart, please. It's a little dirty on the outside. The inside is pretty good. Just, just, just shine it up a little bit. Use some polish on it. We gotta be sincere about it. He can do the same exact thing for us if we ask him. So that, that's the cleaning of the heart. Now we have to arrange our priorities. <coughs> but first seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. From Matthew 6. So where should our priorities be? Our priorities should be with God. God first, his kingdom. <coughs> Everything else will fall into place. So the second part of preparing for Christmas involves rearranging. How many of you guys rearrange your house for Christmas? Yeah, quite a few of you do. Yeah. And you got to make room for that huge Christmas tree, right? <laughs> Funny little story. So any of you guys who, who know where we used to live, we had kind of a smaller house. okay? And my mom's house wasn't much bigger than ours. But she always had this huge Christmas tree. Well, almost a year ago, this about a year and a week ago, my mom passed away. And she made sure to tell my siblings that I get the Christmas tree. <laughs> what am I, this Christmas tree is, it's huge. Where in the world am I gonna put this Christmas tree? Well, now some of you know that we have recently purchased a new house and there's plenty of room for this big Christmas tree. So I think my mom had a little bit of foresight there that we're gonna need this huge Christmas tree. I, I bet that Christmas tree would take up the space both of those tables. It's, it's just massive. But anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. That she knew one day I was going to need this big Christmas tree. But anyways, we had to rearrange. We had to rearrange things to make room. God wants us to arrange our hearts for Christmas. His desire is for us to make room for his son. We've got to have room for him in our hearts. When we make this extra room in our heart, God blesses us with more of it. It is then that the blessing of God begins to flow from our hearts and our lives into other people's lives. When we put Christ in the center of our lives, everything else comes together. <clears throat> when Jesus made this statement of seeking the kingdom of God first, he was giving us kind of a, a prescription, if you will, against worry. Jesus makes it clear that if we're to succeed in life, our focus must be on him first. And we, be, 
become so busy celebrating the season that sometimes we completely miss it. We miss the reason why we're celebrating the season. We get so busy that we, we go from Christmas to Xmas. Because it's, it's quicker to write. It's shorter. That drives me nuts. Christmas then. But we get busy, though. We become centered on shopping for the right gifts. And, and we forget to tell others about God's perfect gifts. We're not prepared for Christmas until our priorities are in line. So we have the cleansing of our hearts. We have the arranging of our priorities. Now we get to the decorating. The fun part, right? The beautiful decorations. What does God do to decorate our heart? I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will re remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God decorates a heart by cutting out the old and creating something new. When he decorates a heart, he must have complete control over the whole life. And far too often, we, we only give God partial control. You know what, God? You know, I'm, I still want to I still want to oversee this, so I'm going to be kind of the supervisor. I'm going to let you let you work on it, but only if it works with what I say. That's how we tend to work sometimes. Or we say, you know what? This isn't so this isn't really important in my life, so God, I'm going to let you, I'll let you take control of it. He's got to have control of the whole thing. God's desire is to take our life and make it more beautiful. God wants to add value to our lives. He only wants the very best for our life. And he wants to be the influence in our life. Not one of the influences. He wants to be the influence. The only influence. However, he waits for us to give him permission before he can begin his work. We have to ask him to do this work in us. God desires to decorate our life with his blessing and give us something completely new. So that's, we have the decorating there. Now the gifts. Everybody loves to open gifts, right? See the paper flying, or, or, or maybe you're the type that, that cuts the tape so you can reuse the paper. I've seen that. Yeah. <clears throat> Believe it or not, there's probably more people who do that than, than, than rip the paper apart. So. The receiving of gifts. So this has two parts. The receiving of gifts and the giving of gifts. The receiving of gifts. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. From John 1, 12. John speaks of those who received Christ. Receiving a gift. The Greek meaning of the word receives, receive means to welcome or to accept. John's making it pretty clear that we're to welcome Christ into our lives. This receiving is not just for, for part or some of our life, but for our whole life. Christ must also be believed. Okay, we have to believe in it. To believe in the name of Jesus means to put faith in him as a person and, and what he represents. The simple act is, is life changing. If you believe that, that can, that can be a whole transformation in itself. Because we become children of God. <coughs> God's given us an incredible gift. And it's by faith in Christ we can become children of God. When we accept Christ as we're ushered into his family, John says that through Christ we are given the right to become children of God. Literally, we're given permission to join God's family. By faith in Christ, we become a part of eternity. So our citizenship has changed. And we gain a part of heaven. Our position in life has changed. We gain that dwelling place in heaven and the divine grace from God the Father. So we see the, the receiving of gifts there. Now the giving of gifts. That's probably my favorite part, the giving of gifts. I honestly, I love giving, giving, getting a gift, but I like giving gifts even more. It's what, probably one of the greatest joys that I see during Christmas time is, is somebody giving somebody else a gift. You know, the, that light in their eye as they give it to them. 
I don't really care much for shopping. I do go shopping. Don't get me wrong. Especially in the tool tool part or automotive section. I don't I really, really don't like wrapping gifts. Because I can tear an inch apart, but to wrap a gift it it confuses me. I don't know. I I can't get it right. <clears throat> this side's gonna be super long and this side's gonna be short and the paper won't match up. It's some kind of geometric formula for wrapping <laughs> gifts. And, and a lot of you probably have it, but not me. No, can't do it. So gifts, wrapping gifts is not one of my things. I love to watch other people tearing gifts though. Paper flying, they're they're just ripping it open, and then you see their face light up. And you hear those words. It's just what I've always wanted. Whether or not they're sincere words or not, you know, that's... <laughs> but usually, usually the kids are, are the funniest, because they say what's on their mind. I, already, I just got one of these yesterday. <laughs> just say thank you. But when they're super excited and, and, and you know it's what they've always wanted, whether it be an adult or a child... You just see that, that joy come over. Because it truly is what they were wanting. <clears throat> it might surprise you, but this applies to Christ as well. There's a great joy when you give a gift to Christ. What kind of gift does, does Christ want from us? Proverbs 23, 26. My child, give me your heart. And let your eyes keep to my ways. The greatest gift you can give Christ is yourself. So, where are we with our, our preparations for Christmas? Are we still in the cleaning process? Are we rearranging some things so that we can, we can fit them into our lives? Maybe, maybe we're ready for the decorations. Or maybe you've got the decorations complete and, and now you're ready to, to receive that gift. This year, the wonder of Christmas can come alive for you in whole new ways if you open your heart and allow God to prepare you for Christmas. Amen, brethren. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this, this illustration that we have here this morning that that you have spoken to us about, about preparing ourselves for, for the birth of your son, Lord. And, Father, there is no greater gift that, that can be given than what you have given to each and every one of us. And that's, that's your one and only son who came to the cross to die for us. Father, we thank you so much for that gift. And it, it truly and honestly is what we've always wanted. Father, that we just hope and pray that, that as we go about our daily lives, that we do have our priorities in, in order and that we do place you first, Father. And Lord, I just pray this morning that if there's somebody here who's ready to receive that gift, Father, that you would speak to them and, and that they would, they would open their arms and, and accept that gift freely, Lord. Again, we thank you for your love for us. And it's all this we pray in your Son, Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.